welcome Cohen in the city suburban on air and uh, very happy to have with me today uh, some people to talk about the leukemia and lymphoma society of Canada a very important organization uh, Ricardo Zerbino is from the firm of Baker Tilly Montreal he was the man of the year for uh, and leaders and as a leadership committee chair and uh, Christina Cadis is the mother of Lena uh, Lena is the girl of the year and now in the maintenance treatments for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So uh, certainly a stories to tell us, uh, both of you have some stories to tell us. So coming up is a very interesting fundraiser, uh, May 1st, 7.30 PM, it's called Savor the World uh, Culinary Experience. And uh, Ricardo, perhaps you can start off by telling me about this fundraiser that's taking place. Uh, yeah, absolutely, thank you. Uh, basically, the, the Savor the World event, as, as we called it, is, is May 1st. Uh, it's a culinary experience that, that's being offered to people in the comfort of their own home, trying to take advantage of uh, doing something with the curfew that's still on. So we're going to have a cooking demo from our caterer that's also providing the food. Uh, his name is Treitar Brera. Uh, there's a sommelier experience, music, uh, and of course, some, some mission moments to, to go into uh, to explaining a little bit about, about the mission and, and everything that goes with it. There's going to be three packages that are offered from cuisines in, in Asia, France, and the Mediterranean. The prices are 175, 200, and 275, uh, respectively. And that's for a dinner for two. And they are four and five course dinners. And the tickets can be purchased uh, online. Very creative. Uh, tell me, uh, how did you get involved in this particular charity, Ricardo? I was involved in, in some capacity for, for many years, but last year I was approached, uh, nominated actually, to run as man and woman of the year for leukemia and lymphoma. Um, their mission really is to cure all blood cancers and improve the quality of life of patients and their families. And so this particular um, segment of, of the foundation is this 10 week philanthropic competition. And it's uh, really pits the, the leaders of local communities around Canada and this is the third year. And last year, I, I, when I was involved and, and ended up winning the event was the second year. But basically, it's, uh, it's in Toronto, Halifax, and Montreal this year. And you go head to head with these leaders in the community. And basically, the top philanthropist wins the award for the year. So I was nominated. And it was an honor to be nominated. And really, uh, was, it was a great 10-week uh, event where it's a competition. But really, we're all in it for, for the same reason which is to raise as much money and awareness as we can for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society of Canada. Terrific. Now, Christina, tell me, tell us about your daughter. So um, my daughter, Lena, was diagnosed with leukemia when she was 21 months old. So back wow. in September of 2019. And uh, we had just come back from a family vacation and um, she showed some signs of bruising, not sleeping, not eating uh, while we were away. And uh, right when we got back the next day, we brought her to the emergency at the Children's and uh, in Montreal. And within two hours, we were told that uh, she had leukemia. And right away, we were transferred to the seventh floor, which is the oncology inpatient unit at the Montreal Children's, uh, where we spent quite some time. Um, she had her most intense parts of her treatments were from September until last July of 2020. And now she's in what's called maintenance chemotherapy. So um, she does still have treatment. She has treatment at home in the hospital as well, less frequently um, because there are no more detectable cancer cells, but those treatments are set to continue until uh, January of 2022. I can't imagine a more frightening thing to happen to a parent. You must've just been devastated when you got that news. I was. It was shocking. Um, when you go to the emergency, you hope it's something uh, that will pass. You'll get some antibiotics and you'll be on your yeah. way. Um, in our case, it really wasn't the case. Um, Lena was actually a high risk case of leukemia. She had a lot of detectable cancer cells in her blood. We did the whole first round of chemotherapy in hospital. Um, and then she was only discharged from the hospital in the middle of the second round, where she was then going very often to the day treatment center. Um, but then again, any their immune system is very suppressed. So anytime she would develop an infection, a fever, a virus, um, we would be in the hospital. And there's a lot of treatment that is done as an inpatient. So uh, it was definitely the most difficult uh, time of our lives. I mean, it's better now because she is, you know, in remission, but 
the diagnosis uh, was definitely terrible. Yeah, I could imagine. And Ricardo, that's what you're there for, to help people like uh, Lena. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, especially, uh, especially this year. In the past six months alone, requests for support have really skyrocketed. And in the next six months, uh, if, if the current trends continue, the LSC is actually expecting to see a 42% increase in new service users of patients, caregivers, and their families. So now more than ever, uh, the support is uh, appreciated and, and welcomed. You wanted to add something, um, Christina? Yes, and you know the support goes to such great use. Um, the remission rates are higher than they ever were before. Um, there's new treatments, new uh, you know research has been advancing so much um, in the hospital. The care is fantastic, um, and you know all of the efforts that the LSC does every year um, goes to that. And uh, you know we're eternally grateful because you know 30, 40 years ago, if we were speaking, we were not talking about the same remission rates. So it's all of their, at all. So it's all of their efforts that uh, have really helped with, you know, having our little girl be better and healthier and getting over this awful disease. Absolutely. Ricardo, so I guess every organization has to think outside the box during COVID. Uh, but I see that people are getting accustomed to these online fundraisers. They're starting to succeed and you're being creative. Someone's going to have a beautiful meal. There's a way to interact via, via uh, Zoom or whatever platform you use. So how has it been going in terms of the tickets and the sponsorship for this event? Uh, it's been going well. Uh, it's been, been very well. Uh, you had to get creative, as you said, but uh, it's, been, it's been pretty good so far. Uh, it's, it's always difficult to, to you know, have that interactive portion with, with uh, something tangible. So we tried to, to combine food with music and, and a bunch of other uh, events throughout. So we'll see, but we're excited. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you very much for, for having us. Uh, Christina, so what are some of the things that this organization has done for you? And you've probably met other families who are in the same plight as you with children with leukemia. What, what kind of support have you gotten? Um, a lot of it has just been, you know, in the studies, in the treatment options that are available in um, you know, all the care that's provided to the patients, we're very well surrounded. The information is very available to us. Treatments are more and more advanced. Um, so all of that contributes to their remission rates. So we owe it to them. Uh, Ricardo, do you have a goal for the evening? Is there an objective set uh, for fundraising for this organization, for this, this particular um, endeavor? No, not, uh, not a public goal, at least, no. We're okay. just looking for, for as, as much as possible. Right, right. As many and I know tickets that, as possible. I know that the organization also does a lot of education seminars, which I'm sure have been able to go on again via Zoom and other, other matters this, during, during the last year. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to continue for, for the foreseeable future, at least. Yeah. Uh, uh, Christina, how is Lena, Lena right now? How old is she? And uh, for a little girl to face such an illness, how does she handle it? Um, she's now, she's three. Uh, her birthday was in December. She turned three in December. Uh, she's amazing. She's resilient. She's, you know, it's something very, very difficult and very traumatic for a child that's so young to go through. But uh, you can hardly tell when you, you know, aside from the hair loss, which of course really gave it away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she hadn't gained weight for a long time and, you know, the treatments were difficult on her, but, you know, now that the treatments are less and now that she's out of the hospital and not, you know, an inpatient, uh, she's doing great. She's doing great. And we're very, very thankful. And she's only three. You've been dealing with this for the last 13 months under COVID. How extra protective do you need to be? I guess you and your husband and and anyone else in the family? Um, very protective. Uh, she's not in daycare yet. Uh, she can't really interact very much with other children. Um, so we were used to the social isolation. However, it wasn't really anything new to us mm. when COVID hit because she was most ill before COVID in the six months before. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, everything that we were taking, all the precautions that we were taking before, uh, we just had to continue taking them. It's just that now, you know, society's helping us with that um, because everyone's kind of in the same situation. Um, I would think though, 
as having spoken to many families that are on the units now at the hospitals, because I do get a chance to interact with other families, it's very difficult for them. Already the diagnosis is very difficult, but when my daughter was diagnosed, we had so much support. We had family members coming in. Um, you know, I would be able to go home for a couple of hours, come back. Um, you know, now no one's allowed in the hospitals. It's only the parents of the child. They can't really have siblings even. They can't, right. we had a beautiful toy room that, you know, she can play in at times or toys in her room. Like everything is so different and everything is so restricted. So just the psychological aspect for the patient for the families is all that much more difficult yeah. so if we could improve remission rates you know ultimately cure yeah. cancers um that would be amazing so yeah the efforts I, I, are so appreciated and you know even all the candidates for man and woman of the year this year mm -hmm. such inspiring stories so motivated so uplifting so it's really amazing and and uh, ricardo i just want to get a little plug in for uh, baker tilly because uh I know of the firm. My nephew is one of uh, your colleagues, it just turns out. And I know the, the, the chief, it's a great firm, very established, but uh, uh, probably the kind of firm that encourages its, uh, its partners and its, its employees to get involved in the community, I presume. Absolutely. Uh, from personal experience, I've been involved uh, within the community in various different endeavors. They've always been extremely supportive. Even, even to the point where for something like this, they're, they're actually the local sponsor of this uh, Save of the World. And they were um, also a local sponsor last year of the LSC as a whole. So we're, I'm really proud to, to have them as an employer for sure. And they're very, very supportive of, of uh, you know, community uh, endeavors. So, yeah. Well, it's a great event. And we certainly encourage people to buy tickets, be get on sponsorship. You can go to uh, www.cancers De Sange, so it's C-A-N-C-E-R-S, D-U-S-A-N-G dot C-A for all the information. A great website, lots of information there. I want to thank both of you for joining us. And uh, Christina, we're praying for Lena. We hope that she does well and she grows up to be a doctor one day. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks very much. Thank you very guest. much. My guest has been Ricardo and Christina.